Hello and welcome to the GFI software product demonstration series. Today we're going to cover GFI Events Manager. Now before we begin, let's take a look at some of the main features we're going to highlight. We'll look at the general status interface and the information it provides, adding new event sources, managing and creating event processing rules, the event browser, and finally reporting and how that works. Now before we take a look at the actual events manager application let's briefly discuss what it is what it does and how it truly can be beneficial to you and your business network first of all it provides real-time and complete event log data management so it integrates very nicely with the existing IT infrastructure as well as the regulatory operations that occur and the events that are going to be associated with that and then monitors that information Finally, it collects that event log data into a consolidated and centralized platform for those various compliances across your network. It also very comfortably reports on over 2 billion log entries with relatively average server hardware. It even works well in highly distributed or closed or secure network environments. That being said, it's going to require a lot of uh, different types of logs, so we support a pretty wide range, such as Windows event logs, syslogs, text-based files, W3C, SNMP traps, XML type logs, as well as SQL Server or SQL Server logs. And then it finally takes that data and makes sense of the event log data that's collected. And then finally delivers that information over very intellectual and visible means to a user interface that will allow those event logs to be collected and understood with relative ease. Our first view is going to be the Quick Launch Console. It's the little window that's popping up right now, right there on the main screen. This small window is the Quick Launch menu. This is going to allow some of the common tasks to be navigated with a single click. Now, these are going to be Browse Events, which takes you to the Events Browser section to quickly view and analyze and filter events, the Generate Reports section which will access the reporting features to instantly or schedule or report generation of your important events. The View Dashboard, which is going to give you direct access to the dashboard to view your most important events in a graphical interface. And then finally, Customize, which will bring you to the customization interface to configure GFI Events Manager settings. First of all, let's take a look at the General tab. So we're going to go ahead and close this first and then look at our General Status. We'll focus on this for right now. Now this will provide general information about the events manager service status, the database status, as well as the statistics metrics of the main events that are being collected and monitored based on event priority. The next section under the status will be the job activity tab. Now from the job activity tab, we can see the events collected in real time. This can help us to easily identify any issues that would arise during these event collection processes. It also gives us the progress of any collection or event collection jobs currently in process. The next section would be under the Statistics tab. Now under the Statistics tab, we're shown general event collection metrics, and this is done by count and by time frame based on the event types that we covered earlier in our description. The next section we're going to cover is the configuration tab. Now, under this section, you're going to see four subcategories event sources, event processing rules, active monitoring, and then finally the options section. Now, under the event sources, here you're going to be able to configure your event sources and then, of course, group them based on their role in the network. You can also perform various actions on those event sources, such as creating or deleting event sources and then the details of those, creating or adding new groups or deleting old groups, creating or deleting rules, um, also reports for those different types of event sources. Under the event processing rules, here you're going to find the current rule sets for all of the standard events that you can collect from. Now to the right, you'll have the details pane that's going to show details of those specific rules and categories, such as the actual name of the particular rule, the priority that the rule is currently set under, what classification that that rule follows, the actions that are going to occur once that rule is triggered, 
a description of what that rule does. And then finally, the last date that particular rule has been changed for that particular event. Under the Active Monitoring section, this is where you can create checks for basic services and resources that follow under various categories. And those primary categories are going to be things like uh, Linux or Unix operating systems, network or internet protocols and services. You also find collections for SNMP, also Windows operating systems. And you can also collect other things for physical resources like CPU usage, and disk usage. Finding out if the computer is actually responding or on in the network by doing a ping check. And then, of course, what the physical condition of those disks are. Finally, under your options section, you can configure main operational components of Events Manager, such as setting the default classification actions for each of those rule sets, changing and modifying specific users or groups, console security and auditing options, specific alerting options for emails or SMS messages that will go out to administrators that would be assigned to take care of any matters if an event or a critical event gets triggered, basic database operations and where those events are stored, and then finally custom event logs. So if you need to create a specific event or a specific rule for an event that gets triggered that may not already be in place, you can create your own. Now just as a note for you, because so many event logs are being collected, the collection database can become rather large and potentially unstable if we're not careful. So setting up a database rotation is really going to be an easy and recommended way for that matter to automatically keep the database reliable and of a relatively manageable size. So to do so, we're going to go over to the file storage section under configurations. And then to the right, you'll see configure file storage. Now once we click on that, we'll go to the general tab and first we'll give the database a name and then the folder path where it's going to be stored. Then we're going to click on the rotation tab and then enable database rotation. And once that's enabled, you have the option to select specific rotation options that are going to be used or catered to your needs particularly. Once those rotation options are set, simply click OK and we have a database rotation set. So that's really going to help you automate that process and keep your database in good healthy condition and of a decent size. The next section we're going to look at is the events browser. Now here we get a detailed and categorized view of the events that have been collected and stored for the event sources you specified in the configuration section earlier. Here you can customize the layout of how you want to view the events and details as well as set your own color notifications for a series of event, of event triggers. Here you can see we have a success audit set as green whereas our failure audits or any criticals would go down from orange, yellow, red, so on and so forth. But you can customize these to however you see fit. You can also create, edit, and delete various view types other than the default view for various event groups. How you would go about doing that is you would go to your customized browser layout. Now here, and up at the top, allows you to specify where you want your description window to be, as well as the various color triggers that we talked about. Once you have those in place, simply apply that information or apply that color, and then you're good to go. You're ready to go on your customized event. If you need to run a report based on any of the specified event logs that you're looking at, a report can very easily be generated on the fly. And you'll do so by clicking on the Report from View button up here near the top right area of your event browser window. You'll then go to the reporting section, which is where you're actually going to run the report. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, once in the reporting section, you'll be immediately prompted to verify the details and the specifics. Uh, on the report to be generated from that previous event browser view that we were just looking at. So verify the information that the report that you're going to run is going to be accurate. Um, make sure that all that information is in place. You can select a sorting column if you want to do it by relative ID, importance, time frame, what have you. Specify the layout that you want, um, specific columns that you need to change, anything like that. So you have various different options here. Then, of course, you can always include graphical charts for things like pi or bar graphs if you need to. Once all of that information is set, simply hit OK, and then it's going to start going through the uh, report generation process. 
Now, once the report is generated, it can be viewed in the preview report window right down here on the bottom. Now, from there, it can be printed, uh, it can be deleted, and it can be saved and uh, exported out either in PDF format or in HTML format. So if you ever had the need to run any other types of reports for different types of events for various other needs like compliance or auditing regulations, things like that, you can always find our pre-formatted reports for those specific compliances under the reports menu in the upper left table here. Now various different types of reports can be generated for compliances such as GLBA compliance, HIPAA, PCI DSS, as well as Sarbanes-Oxley or SOX compliance reports. If you ever need to run any other customized reports or anything like that, you can always find a good list of those reports that are available here, and then many other reports as well. I'd like to thank you very much for spending your time with us today and looking at the GFI Events Manager demonstration. If you'd like further details on GFI Events Manager, or you'd like to give it a try and uh, start a free trial for yourself, please feel free to do so and contact us at www.gfi.com or you can send us an email at sales at gfi.com and a representative will be more than happy to contact you back and assist you. Remember, here at GFI Software, we are the software solution specialist for small and mid-sized business.